Hello everybody, what a joy again, a privilege for me to be sharing with you and coming into your home, into your life, bringing the word of the living God. I tell you the word of God has power to transform and change your life inside and outside and give you hope for the future. Let me tell you today we are going to hear the word which is actually the third part of the message I've been sharing with you. God loves to be believed. God wants to be believed. God wants to show himself powerful on your behalf. But the, the, the title or the topic that we are discussing today in this series is hardness of heart. Now you want to give great and close attention to everything you will learn today because I'm telling you many times we think my heart is all right. I have no hardness against God. But let's go through the scripture today and you will see for yourself, hear for yourself what God wants to speak to you. So let's go into the word and I'll be back to pray for you and encourage you a little bit more. Well, if you want to write down the title of today's sermon, it's God loves to be believed. Dash hardness of heart, dash part three. Kitna part kare, <laughs> All right, uh, if you want to write this down, write down, God loves to be believed. Parmeshwar chahe ki tu par vishwas karo. And the topic particularly we're doing today is the hardness of heart, dil ki katarai, or part three. It's part three of the message that I've been sharing with you that the Lord laid in my heart to share with you. Number one was unbelief. Then we did another part of it, unbelief. This is part three, which is hardness of heart. I'll tell you, you will uh, uh, in for something interesting because many times we are judging and searching others' heart, but it, today we'll be searching and judging our own heart. Amen. Because being in church, you know, many times we think people who don't believe God, they are the ones who have hard hearts. But did you know when God was talking through the apostles, he was talking to the church that you can have hard hearts. Or your heart, heart can become hard. That means, you know, why does God talk about heart? Heart is the seat or the center of your emotions, of your thinking, of your life, of your decisions. You know, heart in the sense of the word means a lot about a person. So when we say the heart of the issue, the main core reason for the issue. I mean, if you see that, okay, good. So let's go into the word of God. Back, our text scripture is in Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 14, because that's where we began. This is where Jesus comes to the disciples. He's risen from the dead and, and he told his disciples that I will rise from the dead. And you know, the interesting thing is his lovely disciples did not believe it. Why? Let me tell you why they did not believe. Because I, what did I say was the reason they could not believe or they became hard in believing? Because they saw Jesus die. Say they saw Jesus die. They saw him nailed to the cross. They, they took him, they touched his dead body and put him in the borrowed tomb of Joseph of Aram Arimathea. And they closed, and they saw the, 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 the stone being rolled over the mouth of the tomb. They saw the seal, the Roman seal. They knew by experience this cannot happen. Though Jesus said he will rise up, but he is sealed. That's like most of your miracle. Oh, I know if I was a little early and they wouldn't have diagnosed me with this sickness, I could have been healed. But now it's too late. Let me ask you something. When is it too late for God to give you a miracle? Never. There's always a chance if you can believe. So what were the disciples' unbelief and hardness of heart based on? What they had experienced, what they have seen, what, whose body they had touched. Sometimes when you have your bank account statement giving you all the negatives, the negatives, and like every time you're doing your best to save and nothing is working, or your body, you want to do it, giving it all the medicine and you're wanting to keep that body going, it's nothing working. When you're working on a relationship and that marriage relationship, nothing is working. When you want to work on your children and it seems like they are nothing working, what do you do then? You become actually into unbelief, and then from unbelief, your heart becomes hard. You just can't see beyond your experience. And that becomes a problem. And that's what Jesus was going to deal with his disciples. So let's read. 
Okay, let's read. Now when he, Jesus, rose early on the first day of the week, not from sleep but from death, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast out seven demons. And she went and told those who had been with him, or with Jesus, as they mourned and wept. Jesus' disciples are crying and mourning, oh, Jesus is dead. And when they heard that he was alive, say he was alive. He is alive. And that he had been seen by Mary Magdalene, they did not believe. Why? They could not believe of unbelief had settled in their heart. Hardness of heart because they saw that they laid a... You understand? How many of you understand? If you put some, uh, like in your human mind, if you went to a funeral, you, you saw uh, and you were part of the people who cleaned up the body and, and clothed the body, dead body, not the corpse, and you put, them, it put the dead corpse in the uh, coffin box and then you carried it to the place where they all cried and after the ceremony was over, you all took it and then laid it and you let the, uh, the people who look after the, uh, I mean the coffin to go into the, the hole that you dug and it's down there and you put mud on it. How many can figure that out? Now, Abdum Bole, He's alive and risen from the dead. Huh? I can't believe. Why? Hamra, I washed the dead body. Dead. I put it in the grave. Dead. We covered it with the mud. And, and like after one week, Naisake, paid food gave it. All the kiruwa sabai gave. You, you can't imagine that they are alive after one week. How many of you understand that? The same situation is with the disciples. They lifted the body of Jesus. They saw the blood stained body and they washed it and they put him in a, in a sweating cloth. They tied, clothed him like an embalming cloth. Like the Egyptian, they clothed him with strips of cloth from the top of his head to the sole, except the face part was left. That's why when, when uh, did you know when, uh, when Peter came in, in, into, that, uh, into that tomb, you know what he saw? What did he saw? He said, he, they saw his, uh, he, the, uh, the grave clothes and his, uh, the, the piece of uh, uh, cloth that covered him uh, wrapped and put on, as, on the head side, right? No, li literally, one of, the, uh, one of the, the people, the historian says, actually, they saw the embalm, the round embalming. You know, when you embalm something, you put the cloth and you glue it. And, like there was, and the entire body structure was there, the embalming. The face part was there, but the body was not inside. How can you have the body missing from the body was there and you embalmed it and then later you're looking, three days later, there's no body in there. How many of you can visualize it? The resurrection is real. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. <laughs> Amen. So, so, so here the disciples, they can't believe it. Okay, next, read on. This is more like a summary version, right? This, uh, this guy's link. <clears throat> so they did not believe. And after that, he appeared in another form to two of them who walked with, uh, uh, with, uh, with them. And they, so they went back and they told the rest, the disciples, but they did not believe them either. Verse 14. Later, he appeared to the 11 of them. As they sat down at the table and he... Bless them. As I said, we should have, you know what Jesus does when Jesus shows up? The first thing he does to them is he rebuked them, uh, 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 rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Why? Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Because very important part is, if you are going to preach for Jesus, if you are going to be a witness for Jesus, you have to start from the standpoint of believing. Because later on when you read, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He who believes. If you are telling others to believe, you must believe first. Amen. You see the church? We have churches where they are teaching other people miracles happen. They are teaching other people Jesus is alive. But for themselves, they don't believe in them. They, if, if it's for them and their bodies, they won't believe healing. They won't believe financial prosperity. They won't believe that it is possible. Let me tell you something. Before you share Jesus, He must be real to you in order for Him to be real through you. How I many of you understand that? So that's why Jesus rebuked them. You know, sometimes I feel like we should have rebuking services in church. Where we rebuke unbelief. <laughs> Where we rebuke if you don't. Your heart is hard and you are not forgiving or loving each other. 
How many of you would like to come to our rebuking service? But they say, Sunni Sabakpadi. Yeah, nature, I'm okay, but now Jesus came and rebuked them. How many of you remember, uh, this, this is not that while when he rebuked them because he says 11 of them were there. There was a, this is the second time when he comes. Did you know that was the second time? Here's the summary. When Jesus came to the disciples the first time, one guy was not there. His name was Thomas. Anybody knows Thomas? He's normally known as Doubting Thomas. <clears throat> So what happened? Thomas was not there. So Jesus comes. The, this time, the, the missing story there is when he was rebuking because his, uh, uh, Mark was actually summarizing because he's writing on what he has heard from Peter. So when that story happened, Thomas was not there. The first time when Jesus came, he said, I will not believe until I put my finger into his nail pierced hands. I will not believe if I, until I put my hand on the side where the spear had gone through, until I see and touch him, I will not believe. Jesus shows up, rebukes them and said, where's Thomas? That rebuking service will look like this. Where's this person? Now, why can't you believe? Come here. <laughs> you, know, you know, we should call each one. Huh? Why can't you believe? You know, we should get angry on them. Why can't you believe? Why are you doubting God? Why are you doubting God for your prosperity? Why are you doubting God for your miracles? Why are you doubting God that He has your life in His hand? Praise the Lord. Okay, so, so he brought uh, uh, Thomas and said, Yeah, put your finger here. Oh, here. I'm not really sure if it is here or here. M somewhere, right? In the hand. Most people say here because he was hanging by that, but I believe then the support was in his legs. So there could be many things. It could be they've been here, here. There's an issue going on, controversy going on. I don't want to get into controversy. Let's stay in the right side. Anywhere, but it was in two places here. Anywhere. Then he said, put your hand in the side of, uh, and, and feel it. And he said, yes, I believe. You know what Jesus said while he was rebuking him? I want you to be believing. I want you to be how, what are you? A believer. When are, are you not supposed to be believing? Never. You are supposed to be believing. When? 24-7. That's the life you live. You always believe. You believe God is working in you. You believe the best for every day of your life. There is never supposed to be a time you are not believing God. Say amen. So then Jesus said one wonderful word and I want to give it to you. How many of you want, want some wonderful word today? And you know what Jesus said to uh, the disciples? You have seen, blessed are you who have seen and believed, Thomas and all of you. But there is great blessing on those who have never seen me yet believed. And you know who are they? We. We have never seen, but we believe. Jesus calls you blessed. <laughs> Amen. Jesus called blessed are they who have never seen me, but believe me. Amen. Say, I am blessed. Why? You believe you never saw Jesus. But you know He is. You have felt Him. You have experienced Him. You have seen His hand in your life. I say, once you come into Christ and you believe Jesus, it can never be. You will never have experienced one miracle in your life that you know for sure this is God's hand in my life. I tell you, never forget that smallest miracle he did. The more you thank God and amplify that small miracle, you will have miracles and supernatural provision and an amazing life every day of your life because faith in God always produces the supernatural. You want to write that down. Amen. Okay, so what did Jesus rebuke? Their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now, let me give you a, how it works. When you don't believe what Jesus said long enough, you will go into a state called hardness of heart. Your hard heart will become hard. You, you won't believe anything. You'll come to church because you're a Christian, but you won't start, you won't believe, you won't live like it. You just, just hard is hard. Then from hard-heartedness, you'll go into a state called rebellion. You'll start fighting all believers. You'll always find excuses. Your attitude will become bad. You become rebellious. If God says, do this, you'll do that next thing. And very soon, that's the area nobody should come, rebellion. Because you know who was rebellious and got kicked out? Think about it. The shining angel in God's presence. You understand whose presence? 
Yahweh Elohim, the creator God, whose presence he was in the very presence of God Almighty. Yet in his heart, because pride and rebellion go hand in hand. It's all about you, what you want, what you feel. You know how you find out a rebellious person or prideful person? The big eye is a life. They want it their way, their thought. Why don't anybody understand? It's all about me. No, it's all about him. Let me tell you, when things people don't understand, don't have to fight them to realize or recognize you. Let me tell you what. When things are going wrong and nobody understands you, mis people miscommunicate to you, they push you down, don't fight your case. Let the Lord fight your case. Amen? Let God fight your case. Because when God fights your case, you always win. Amen. I, I know something about that. Because many times, this world teaches you, tum koi tum no, we are not supposed to do that. We are supposed to let God fight my way. But there are sometimes when people abuse and use you and you have the right legally to challenge that, you should do that. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when they are loved ones that don't understand you, pray for them, forgive them, but you believe God for your vengeance. Amen. 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 Very important. I'm going to fight my case myself. I've got a big mouth and I know how to use my mouth. <laughs> Go ahead, use your mouth. Your, your mouth is with fire with sticks. You understand what words are? Words are like stick. Every time there's a fire, you're putting stick. When you keep using words. Did you know how powerful a soft answer can be like? It's like a heap, a, a bucket of water. When you can give a soft answer, the bucket of water will put away the fire. But no, <laughs> that's not what we do. If the fire is on, I'll put some more fire. <laughs> because we are the people of fire. <laughs> no, the Holy Ghost fire doesn't make bad fire. The Holy Ghost fire makes your life well, okay? It burns the sin out of your life. It burns the pride out of your life. I tell you, to, 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 the, one of the answers to unbelief is not only teaching, but it's humility. Say humility. You know why? Because rebellion is the opposite of humility. Rebellion is the great I. Humility is Lord. You know, one, one prayer, you cannot get answered from God. Lord, make me humble. It's not a biblical prayer. Huh? Yes, the Bible says, you humble yourself. <laughs> you die to yourself. You choose to forgive. You choose to come and, you know, one of the powerful ways uh, of prayer is to go on your knees. I tell you, it will, it's not one of, uh, it's not the only way, but I'm just saying one of the most powerful ways is when you bend your knees and you fall on your face many times and then you pray. That takes away a lot of pride out of your life. Was the last time you practiced that kind of prayer? Going on your knees and just worshiping God and saying, Lord, I can't do anything without you. I, I know it's okay to sit down and pray and stand up and pray. I'm talking about, I said, one of the most powerful things that will actually humble the pride out, get the pride out of your life is you go on your knees and let God know it's not about me. Because it's going to pain. But then you come to a place when you have marks on your feet and your knees where you know you have been hours in that knee praying out to God and calling out to God. And I tell you, your life will show the humility and the goodness of God in your life. Amen. I won't say much. Let's keep going. <laughs> Psalms chapter 95 verse 8. Psalms 95 8. Let's go out there and read this. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And his? So let's do this again. The Lord is good. No, I said the Lord is good. And his mercy. You tell me that part, okay? I'll do that again. The Lord is good. And his mercy. Hmm, smart people. Okay, let's go. See, you got it. Psalms 95, verse 8. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, I'm just going ahead in verse 9. When your fathers, the children of Israel, tested me, they tried me 
Hey, though they saw my work, though they saw my work, though they saw my work. I tell you, many people have seen miracles. They've heard about miracles. They've, they've seen what God can do. They've experienced many things that God has done in their life. Yet, they hardened their heart. Let me tell you, just because you sit in the church and you're part of a church does not mean that you probably cannot have a hardened heart. Oh, yes, you can. Because when the trial gets hard and things are not working and you are praying and while you are praying, your loved one dies. You've been fasting and something doesn't happen. You get hard on God and you can. And if you don't check your heart out very soon, your attitude towards God and the words you use towards God will be very harsh because you blame God for the problem and the tragedy of your life, which he is not. He is actually the answer of your life. God did not curse Adam. Did you know that? God didn't put a curse on Adam. Adam put a curse on himself by touching what was already cursed. Did you know? So you don't have to make God put any kind of curse on you because it doesn't. God has already cursed sin. Go touch sin. How many of you got that? Sin is, under, see, sin is cursed. How many of you understand that? Sin is deadly. Bible says the soul that sinner die. It hasn't been taken away yet. But the person has been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. So you stay under the covering of the blood. And whenever you fall in transgression in anything that you do that God did not tell you to do, the best thing to do is open your mouth and say, Father, forgive me for I knowingly did that or I unknowingly fell a victim of that or I went into unbelief and, and I got angry on you. Father, cleanse me my heart of that kind of attitude and my thoughts. Let me live for you. You must be quick to repent, church. Because you don't deal with sin, sin will deal with you. I'll say that again. If you don't deal with, deal with sin, sin will deal with you. And let me tell you, when sin deals with you, it's bad. It makes you pay more than you want to pay. It keeps you longer than you want to stay. It makes hell out of the best things God wants to give you. Okay? Amen. So it's talking about the children of Israel. They saw God's work. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation. Oh, man, you people should meditate on this. How many years? 40 years. It's like living in a marriage or a family where pak, 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 pak. I mean, ratatat, tat, 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 tat. Never a day, 40 years. You understand? Nagging and complaining. You know, it's all there. 40 years. Instead of praying and saying, Father, we would love to eat food. They went like this. At least Look at that. Of all the things they were praying, they were praying for onion and garlic. And you know what they forgot? They forgot the petty jolagatra loke. They forgot the stripes they were given, pats. And every time they were king, they forgot the pain. They were looking for the garlic, the onion, the fish. Some of their ancestors are in church today. You know, you should never say it was okay when I didn't know Jesus. Never say it even out of your anger or pride because it was never okay. That devil had kept you down there in bondage. Even if you had everything, you were still going to hell without Jesus. Never compare your saved life with the unsaved life. Never do that. Never do that. Don't ever make a joke of the salvation of Christ. Never make the joke of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the most precious thing ever given as a gift to humanity to save them from their sin eternally. That's why when you ask forgiveness, God doesn't see your sin. He sees the sacrifice of Jesus. Because if he God wants, he, he, he would have punished you and he would have been right in punishing you. But he doesn't punish you because he honors the blood. That's the power the blood holds for you and me today. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Bible says they overcame the enemy. The accuser, the one who condemns you by the blood of a lamb and the word of that testimony. What is your testimony today? I believe Jesus. 40 years, man, these guys got God grieved. This is God's uh, testimony. God saying, I got grieved. He said, I was grieved. There was one time, did you know? You don't believe that, but there was one time God said, Moses, just get away. Moses, just move out of the way. 
I'm going to destroy these nagging, complaining, murmuring people. I do all the good, they keep talking back to me, bad. <laughs> Moses said, please, Lord, please don't. <laughs> we, need, we need intercessors. We need mediators today. How many of you got that? Would you be the mediator for this country and the world? Because if you are not praying, judgment will fall. We need to be praying for our loved ones. I know sometimes things happen in our nation and our world, around the world, but it only happens when the prayer, prayer covering is broken. People are not praying for others. See, you must go, a, a, a person who intercedes doesn't see their own sin because they know it's covered. They are crying out as if they are sitting with the company or the country. I mean, if you see that. All right. Get back here. 40 years. Grieve with them. And he said, this is a people who go astray in their hearts. Not in only their mind, in their hearts. And they do not know my ways. Why is a person's heart hardened? Because they do not know God's ways. They go distraction, distractions of life, take them away. So I swore in my rest, wrath or my anger that I, they, they shall not enter my rest. Man, none of them except uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb and their family went into the, uh, into the promised land. Let me tell you something. If the angels that sin against God, if the angels that sin against God were penalized and, 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 and put into... Uh, did you know there is a, a place in, in, in hell called Hades, uh, underneath Hades, Tartus, where the angels, the ones God sent, were not faithful into their form. They were called watchers. They were actually put in there for judgment. They were Lucifer, cast out of heaven. Then they are the children of Israel. There are many examples. All of these examples are also in the New Testament, given for us, the believers, not to take the goodness and the grace of God is granted to keep sinning and allowing God's mercy to keep covering that. Did you know when sin runs its fullness, it will go over to judgment? Okay, let me ask you one thing. God's going to judge the world, right or wrong? Right. What did he say through Peter to the church? Where will judgment first begin? The church. What will he judge you? To kill you? No. He will first cleanse his church from all the errors that we are living in so that we can come to the truth. Let me tell you, it's not as the leaders go only does the world or the nations go. Let me tell you, as the church goes up, the nations go up. The church goes down, everything goes down. Morality is not kept by the world. It's kept by the church. Thank you for your excitement. <laughs> Morality or, or all that you see on earth happening, it happens or doesn't happen because the church is strong. So if you don't like the way society and everything is going, don't blame the world. That's what they will do. It's the prayerlessness of the church that is causing wickedness to rise. And we and I and everybody who has not been praying, if we were not praying, then we are guilty of it. But I'm telling you, when you get into prayer mode, nothing that the devil throws or wants to do can prevail. Can you say amen? So the children of Israel got, got God into a place where he would have destroyed them, but he did not. But they all died. God said, okay, you say you are going to die. You're going to die. See, as you perceive God to be, that's how you're going to see God in your life. Matthew chapter 19. Let me show you what happens here. This is interesting. This is about divorce. Do you think divorce was God's idea? No. Do you think uh, uh, sin and uh, Adam being cast out of Eden was God's idea? No. I'm, I'm going to answer all the questions from now. Matthew 19, 7. Are you there? Right? Matthew chapter 19, verse 7. Uh, they, they're talking about separation, right? They're talking about divorce. They said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and put her away? This is talking about a woman that uh, since God said they should be joined together, then why did Moses come and separate them? And he said to them, who's saying? Jesus. He said to them, listen, Moses did it only because of the hardness of your heart. You see why God, uh, what, not God, but Moses, God allowed Moses to tell them to, uh, actually Moses did it because he was tired. They kept wanting another woman. They were tired of the woman because she would not listen. She would say something. I'm just enough. I want to put away this wife. 
And you know what he said? He got tired of them. Ma, mangya, mangya, mangya. Nah, matai deka. And then just, I believe they used to fight. And 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 and, and uh, Moses was tired of that. Because if they could complain about other things, what don't you think they were complaining about the wife? And then he says, Moses, because of the hardness, they would not listen that they were supposed to be faithful to the marriage, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. You see, divorce is the reason of, the only reason divorce can be possible because someone's in the marriage become hardness of heart. Amen, Brother Brian. That's, I, I agree with that. Very true. Because it's in the Bible. It says there. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you for uh, unveiling the truth to us. Why do marriages and relationships fall? Hardness of heart. When you stop, you just close your heart from seeing the weakness could be with other as much as you have weaknesses. When you have this high morality rate, uh, morality in your mind that everybody should be moral in this way, when you yourself never gauge or examine your own morality. You know, it's, the easiest thing to do is to point the finger. Who broke the glass? Who did the bed? It's the woman. Now, woman can speak, man. It's the man. It's the man. Blame the man. He, he says he's the head of the house. That's the guy. Take all the, the problem from him. Now, when the parents come together, yes, it's the children. It's the children, Lord, you give it to me. No. It's the hardness of heart. Say the hardness of heart. What does that mean? You are no more listening to messages. No more you are tuned to God's voice. What did Jesus say, my disciples, my sheep will do? Hear my voice. What's the first voice you must learn to hear? God's word. If you have no desire to hear and learn the word, you will never know the audible voice of Jesus. That's the problem. It's because you are hearing voices, but that voice is not the word and it's not the Lord. I mean, you see that. Oh boy, you get out of here right now from church if you just put your Bible away for a while. you got so much noise. Everybody's got a big mouth and they use it. Everybody's got stories to share. Everybody's got everything nowadays. If you got nothing but a mobile phone, you can be occupied from today till the day Jesus comes. You can never leave your house. You'll, be, you'll know everything sitting at home. I'm telling you the truth. Probably you'll talk to everybody, but never talk to them face to face. And it's amazing. People talk in the mobile so much and somebody comes in front. Um, <laughs> what do I talk? They, they freak out. <laughs> and ideally, you can freak out. You can talk everything in the phone. Blah, 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 blah. And when they come in, the, in front of your face, <clears throat> it takes a while, probably half an hour, one hour, two hours, probably but might say two words, three words. Why? I just know how to communicate with this. That's something like this. Some people smart. I have to learn. I go like this. <laughs> how many of you are getting that? The importance is whose voice are you hearing? Ask yourself, whose voice? Now ask this question with me. Whose voice, whose voice am, I am I hearing? Because if you are not putting this in your eyes and your ears, on a, on a faithful basis, I'm not saying 24 hours, but I'm saying you are listening to it and are conscious, are conscious of the word. If you are not taking time to pray every day, daily, then it's obvious you will get hard hearted. Let me show you. How many of you remember when God told the children of Israel to collect, collect the manna one day, one, for one time, one day, for one day, every day, except for the sixth day, for two days? Why? Because if you distrust God's word, you want to collect extra in case the manna doesn't come up tomorrow. You, the manna will go bad in the night. So you couldn't even be too smart. That, uh, uh, because people have this attitude of hoarding, right? I, I, I told a lot of people, I'll tell you this, like get as much as toilet paper you need. Not like anybody else needs, you need. It's all about you, you know. You're the only one going to the toilet in the, in the lockdown. Nobody else needs to go. They don't even think. If, if, like there are other people out there who need the rice. Yes, <laughs> I've seen one guy. I, I, no, I, th there should be two things. One I call responsibility. The other I call fear. 
That fear will make you hoard. You know what is hoard? Stock. Stockist. I need it. I just need it. You don't need it, but you need it. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Christmas is God. I'll sing it. Silent day. It's a Sunday. Okay. But what I'm saying is fear will make you do and make you think about things. That's how the children of Israel were. Some people get that extra. Guess what happened? It went bad. God wants you to trust him every day. It's called daily. The other word Jesus taught his disciples, give us this day my daily bread. As you gave me yesterday, I thank you. But this day, I need daily bread. When tomorrow comes, Lord, give me this day. Because it will keep you asking. It will keep you trusting. It will keep you looking to him. And your heart will not harden because it's humbled before God. Oh, but if you become like that guy, uh, uh, this guy Achan. Anybody knows Achan? In the Bible, we went to battle and they lost. And Joshua came and said, Lord, you said go. We went, but we lost. God said, yes, of course you lost. There's a guy, I told him not to touch the unclean garments of priests and all that. And he, and he saw the good clothes and he hid it in his tent. Joshua said, I didn't do it. He said, I know you didn't do it, but you are all one. You are all one. The church is one. It's not divided. I know the, the, the leaders in this nation think every church is divided. I don't know why, but we are all one. And we should not only talk we are one, we should live as we are one. How I many of you agree there? with that? We are all in one. Oh, which denomination? They shouldn't even ask that question. They should ask, are you a believer? Oh, praise God, we are all both going to heaven. No, which believer? Pentecostal. Which one you are from? Huh? You are the, the United Pentecostal. Oh, you are the Methodist. This is against what Jesus taught. Jesus said, you are, I am the body or tree. You are the branches, right? He is the head, we are the body, right? Where in the body did he name the body? The Pentecostal, the Catholics, the, the all the... No, 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 no. That's where we're coming. We're going against him. That's why there's so much hardness of heart against each other. Don't get... You, you should relax. We all believe. We love, yeah? <laughs> I mean, it's true. Why is there a difference in denomination? It's not supposed to be. We are of the same family. We are going to the same heaven. Oh, is there another heaven you people are going to? Or oh, those who are listening. Which heaven are you going to? I don't know which heaven they're going to. I don't know which Jesus. Other people are going to go meet. But we're going to one heaven, one Jesus, one church, one faith, one baptism. One Lord. Doesn't Paul keep saying that? One Lord, one church, one body, one body, one body, one spirit. Oh, we got different spirits nowadays. That's not the Holy Spirit. Anyway. Okay, so Jesus said, because the hardness of your heart. Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Let's finish here. Uh, like after two more scriptures. Mark chapter 3. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something? Well, oh, I tell you, you be, we all better check our hearts all the time. I'll show you. There's a scripture in the Bible. Let me just give it to you. How many of you want to write this down? Go ahead and write this down. It will help you. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5, if you want to write that down, it talks about examine yourself whether you be in the faith. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Just write that down and at home you can go there and read that. It talks about how you should examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Many people, when they take communion, they examine whether they are in sin or not. But actually, you should examine whether you're in faith or not. Praise the Lord. Okay, Mark chapter 3, 1 to 6. Let's read. And he entered the synagogue again. And one man was there who, has, uh, who had a withered hand, whose head probably uh, wasn't walking, or probably it hadn't grown up to its full length. And it's supposed to be probably, you know, sometimes hands don't grow out fully. So it's like hanging and not grown up. So with it could have been either one of them. Okay, let's go on. So they watched, you know, who these people who watch? The Pharisees. You know who are the Pharisees? You can say the pastors. Let me make it easy for you. They were the pastors and teachers of those days. Okay, let's see. These pastors really want people to be healed. Let me see. Let me show you. So they watched him closely. Huh? Watch Jesus closely. Man, they must have had faith to see miracles, eh? No. Let me show you. Whether he would heal him 
on the Sabbath. So they, they might accuse him. It's like what Pastor Lee, they are watching you carefully to accuse you. To find faults in you. You know, believers, sometimes you do good, but some old believer would be looking at you. Hmm, the curse can. Righteousness bole log apan aapke. Takonji boli papi hai. No, uh, if I'm not going to call myself righteous, well, you want me to call myself a sinner? No, I mean, it's amazing. If Jesus forgave me, like for example, if Jesus gave me a gift, for example, Jesus gave me a new mobile phone, like uh, iPhone 12 Max Pro, Pro Max, right? I've got it. Thank you, Jesus. I've got this. Now, it, and just because you don't like me having that, and you want me to have Android Samsung like a something, like, come on, man, why would I want Android when I can have Apple? I mean, Apple was from the beginning, in a garden, nah? <laughs> Don't worry about the sin. The sin bite is gone. Only the leftover is here. <laughs> so so if, if I have an iPhone and you don't like me having iPhone, should I stop having iPhone because you get offended? No, right? Jesus has made me righteous. Now, if I call myself what God has given me, why do you get offended? You know why? Because you can't see yourself like that. Because you still see sin and you get offended. You know, it's amazing. And let me tell you, if any believer wants to be blessed and be rich in God and in rich in finances in life, let me tell you, you must be also willing to face criticism and people talking bad about you. Your own, I'm not talking about outsiders. I'm talking about your own families. Because the moment you start growing and becoming rich, he will come and give you that fake smile. <laughs> they got attitude. They will find fault in you. The same people who love to press you down now can press you and control you. They will say you have changed. You don't like that and like that. It's okay. You know why? Because when you grow higher than anybody else, they don't like you. They want to pull you down to their level. Don't you ever allow another person to pull you down when God is taking you up. Amen. Can you say amen to that? That's a good place. Amen. No, you have good to be. So these people sit down. Look at that. They are not looking for that man to be healed. They are more concerned of finding if he heals him, we'll accuse him. Boy, that's bad attitude. Say bad attitude. Bad attitude. It's like some people know you're going to fall in that uh, uh, ditch. They're waiting. But that kind of attitude of people who are watching you to fall is a bad attitude. I know there are some people I want to see. But sometimes I feel like that. But you know what? If I have an opportunity and they will listen, I will tell them that's the wrong way. Why? Because love of God doesn't want laugh when somebody that is against you falls. Actually, they will save the enemy too. How I many of you see that? We shouldn't have bad attitudes, okay? So, so these gang were waiting, for, ganging up against Jesus. And he said to the man with the withered hand, step out, step forward. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Listen to these people. When you talk about the scripture, these people go mute. People who criticize and look for faults have no scripture in them. That means they have no revelation. They know the Old Testament laws, but they don't know the New Testament righteousness and the grace which Christ has provided. So when you preach about prosperity, when you preach about healings, they always say, if God wants to prosper you, why can't he prosper me first? Well, that's your problem. Probably you're not a giver. A generous giver. Probably you don't know the power of partnership. Probably you don't know the power of seeding seeds. Did you know the law that you don't know is the law you are kept under or away from? Did you know the Bible is full of things of laws, say laws. laws. These are the laws that can be activated and life can be changed. Did you know that there is a law of friendship? You can never go beyond the friendship you are around. Say, for example, you have friends who are always angry and never going somewhere and, and you want to be their friend, but you also want to go higher. Let me tell you, your going higher can never be possible if your friends are not going anywhere. That's why the Bible says, choose your friends very wisely. <clears throat> not everybody likes your sharing. Did you know that? 
Not everybody likes your post. I'm telling you, some of them will see it and judge you for your post, man. This and mm, they, they, they won't, they got attitude, man, attitude. As they have. They could put a like, but they won't. They can say happy birthday, they, they won't. But you know what? You be good. If you know that's a believer, you give happy birthday to them. You like what I like to them. Why? Because you are good. It's hard. But they didn't put it in mind. Why should I put it in them? Because you are not them and they are not you. You are you and they are there. And you are saved and not there. Are you not saved? Yes. This answer, yes. This I said, I will ask the question and I'll answer for you. Yes, you are saved. You are different. You're not like the world. First, first of all, you, you, you should be facing the face of God. Not some book somewhere. How many of you understand? You, you know, most of you don't get what most of like, you are saying. Our face should behold the face of Christ. And His beauty should we reflect in every place we go. Amen. So, so, let's come back. These people had no word. I have to finish here quickly. And when he had looked around, look at them. Look, look what Jesus did. Look. And when he looked around at them with, because, or oh why? Being grieved. Who is grieved? Jesus. Why? By the hardness of their heart. He told them the answer. Is it good to do, is it well to do good on, 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 on the Sabbath to heal somebody, to bless somebody or to do evil? The answer was to do good. But they did not answer because they don't want the good to happen. That's like most people when they see somebody progressing, they can't congratulate because it's not in them. Because they are hard. Because they have been praying for a coat and you got the coat. They've been praying for the car and you are giving the testimony for the car. How will I say, I'm not going to say amen. Uh, let me tell you, 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 you got hardness of heart. Let me tell you, you're watching, hardness of heart. Get out of there, man. Don't we celebrate if somebody got something. Oh, let me have a look. Boy, God did this for you. I'm going to tell other people how God healed your body. I'm going to tell other people how God provided this for you. Every testimony is a testimony. Even in, some people say, eh, chota testimony hai. A testimony is never small or big. It's a testimony. Because somebody went through a test and a test is not easy. Right, but can I? Korn a test easy. Korn a problem easy. Somebody went through it. The testimony is never small or big. It's a testimony. To the goodness of God. You know, look at that. I want you to see yourself. Jesus got angry and he looked at them. And grieved in his heart that you sit here and you can't believe for a miracle, for something good. And you're finding fault in me? Instead of seeing that man healed, when they knew that God called himself Yahweh, uh, uh, what's the name of the healer? Rafa. Yahweh, Rafa. The Jehovah Rafa, the one who heals. They knew about that. But on a Sabbath, you can't heal. Jesus answered their questions and said, is it good to do? And yet they would keep their mouth silent. You know, that's what's happening with the church. Because the church is zipped up, that's why evil rises high. Are you with me? How many of you can see wrong and just sit down and keep seeing wrong? If nothing, most people can see something, nothing happens to their heart. They say, oh, the hot day. Don't, don't you ever see wrong and move away from there. If you see a wrong, out of love, say, I think this is wrong. If you see something, say something. <laughs> Come on, amen. Praise God. We want, because we do it out of love. No, out of love. And if they don't listen, go to pray for them. Take their name down. Father, I pray. My father, my husband, my brother, my sister, they can't see what I'm showing them. But I pray you will speak to them. Okay. So Jesus, I wanted you to see this thing. He was angry and he was grieved in the hardness of the heart. And he said to the man, let me just challenge them. He said, stretch out your hand. And he stretched out his hand and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Think about it. If his hand was missing, uh, his hand was not grown up. And right in their eyes, there's a hand that came out and became same as the other. 
Or probably his hand was not working and his hand grew. Actually, it was withered and the head had grown. And the hand, and there was a miracle in front of their eyes. Think about it. And let me tell you what hardened heart do. Next verse. Next verse. Then the Pharisees went out immediately and plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy Jesus. Say, ouch. I tell you, if this doesn't get you angered, what else will get you hyped up about Jesus and come against hardness of heart? Think about it. They saw a miracle, yet they went out same time to find fault at him that he went against the Sabbath. Oh, man, church, I tell you, rather than celebrating ministries and supporting the truth who are preaching, let's stop being hard-hearted. You seeing other people grow. You seeing testimonies come. Don't be hard-hearted. Rejoice. Say, Lord, I will not hold anything against you or against people because you have called me into the love of God. Amen. Because God loves to be believed. Because when he says, don't do this, you don't do that because he said, and he's smarter and wiser than me. When God says give, you give. When God says forgive, you forgive. When God says go here, you go there. When God says you shall not do this, you will not do that. Why? Because you love God and you know He, is, he, has, the well, he has your welfare in His heart. And when you believe Him, all things are possible. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Whew, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hardness of heart. Hardness of heart. You know, there was, I'll just end here. But, but, but you know, uh, God's anger. Let me just read this last one. Romans chapter 2 verse uh, 5. Romans 2 5. It says, but in accordance with, with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up yourself wrath in the day of wrath. And revelation of the righteous judgment of God. This is Paul writing to the Roman church. And he's not only writing to the, the Jewish, but you must remember the background. He's writing to the Christians who had stopped the Jewish believers now, who had gone out to come back and be accepted in the church. Now he's putting uh, to them that... Uh, how because of the Jewish, the gospel came and now their, their eyes are darkened. But his prayer is that they will be converted and come into the faith. But he's saying, remember, don't harden your heart towards those who first believed. I mean, where the gospel came out of the Jewish people. If you harden your heart, this is what the Bible says. If you read carefully, it says, if you harden your heart and are not repentant, you are treasuring yourself up to the day of God's judgment. Say, ouch. ouch. You see where the danger lies? Judgment will fall if you don't deal with hard-heartedness. It's not talking about salvation. It's about judgment. It's things that you cannot stop will happen. And God, even in His love, wants to do it. Stop it. He cannot because you have activated the hard-heartedness, law of hard-heartedness, which will resound or will, will end up in as a result in judgment in your life. Things can happen that you didn't want to happen because you allowed the law of hard-heartedness to walk against your life. The same thing, did you know prayers cannot be answered if you are not able to forgive people? Did you know that? One of the laws of healing is forgiveness. You, you cannot walk in unforgiveness and be healed. Come, how many of you understand that? How many of you understand what I just said? You cannot walk in unforgiveness. You have all the hardness against your loved ones or families. You say, I, well, I, I, no matter what, but I will not talk to them or do, not like, smile at them. No, 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 no. Even your worst enemy, you need to forgive. Because Christ forgave, you need to forgive. I'm not saying go have tea with them, but your heart must be clear of anything about them. Because some people, instead of you go and have tea, they'll put poison and kill you. <laughs> yes. And then you say, I was just having love. They didn't love me. It's not, it's just, you've been dumb. You don't, until they invite you and they are forgiven you, that's different. You know, just have to be careful nowadays. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you are learning something? Hardness of heart. Don't allow that hardness of heart. You know what? I tell you what, something about God. If you go to Him every day, to the one who made your heart, if you see someone every day, you will become like them. You want to walk in love? You stay with God. He is love. His love will rub off into your life. In the sense you just cannot help yourself but love. 
You want, you want to let your faith, because it's, uh, we, we, uh, we've been talking in the office a while ago. Uh, it's not about that there is no faith in your heart. It's just your lack of knowledge of what God said is, is hindering the faith of God from rising up and doing wonders. Because you've, you've, you have nursed your hurts. You have nursed your experiences of hurt and pain and how they said or what I've done or should have. No, sometimes it's not what others have done. Sometimes it's your failures that you can't get over with. Let me tell you, you need to get over it today, now. I know, we say, but Brother Brian, no, don't but me. You but yourself. <laughs> what is repentance? I change now. I was going this way as a wrong way. Jonah, turn around. Go back where God said for you to go. What did Jesus say to the woman who was caught in adultery? Sin no more. Not some more. Like most people read it, some more. No more. They, as soon as you hear about the grace, some people say, more. No, more grace means no more sin. Let me tell you again, more grace means no more sin. That means I have the ability of Christ in me to live and do what He called me to do and be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother. So, so what are we going to do from today? I'm going to get rid of everything that has stopped my heart. Or if, uh, Check your heart today. Check your heart if it's getting hard towards God. You know, sometimes after the church, after you can be coming to church, sitting down, and, and, and things are not happening the way you want it to happen. And you're getting against God, coming against God. To me, Janaini, let me tell you how you'll know. To my hunger and desire for reading the Bible, listening to message is not as much as it was before. That shows that the love or your heart is... Is something else has your interest now. Let me put it this way. Whatever is your interest, they will spend your time, right? I lay my case. Think about it. Think, see, think what I'm saying. Don't just, just amen here and forget. Wherever your interest takes your time. Ask yourself, wherever you find your majority of time spent is your interest. Jesus said it in the other way, where your treasure is there your heart, your interests, your desires are. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe that word was for you. And it's for me too, because not only this, just because I'm preaching, but it's the word of God that changes life. Now, one of the things I've written it down in my book here that I would like to say, read to you, distrust potentially will lead to disobedience. When your heart becomes hard, you stop trusting God, you become disobedient to Him, and sooner or later, you will become rebellious against God, and your heart will be hardened towards Him, and you will think God is the problem of your life. God is never the problem of your life. He's actually the answer to your life, the answer that you've been looking for. The answer is Jesus. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray for this wonderful person who has been listening and been thinking, is it really that I'm the problem? Or what is God teaching me? Lord, you're actually teaching us the message of righteousness, the grace of God, the healing of yours, the, the Savior Jesus. You haven't been teaching us condemnation. They have been teaching us there is a way out if we repent. So our Father, I pray for this wonderful person who's been listening and feel condemned, feel that uh, is there a portion in my heart that is hard towards you? Lord, as I pray that they repent and come back towards your goodness and your love, understand that you are loving. You are the one who caused this problem and this situation in their life. But actually, you are the one who can restore their situation. Let your healing and your power come and reach their life right now. Father, thank you for the miracle and thank you for turning their life around. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe God heard your prayer. Yes, you, the one watching. You felt very bad about this, but let me tell you, God is the one who is, He specializes in taking the hard hearts of our life and softening is by His love and His mercy and His Holy Spirit and His blood and forgiveness if you allow Him. And I know you have allowed. So we love you. Thank you once again for joining in this program and with us sharing the Word of God to you and your family. I believe God loves you. He loves you full time. We love you and pray for you and that Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you. 
to know more about the ministry and how to get connected with us, like us on Facebook, Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries, and follow us on Instagram, JCLMVG. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLMVG, and be inspired through our website, www.jclm.org.